Hey, you guys, and happy Sunday. Um, welcome to my live. I am Jerome Braggs, the intuitive healer who helps spiritual seekers heal themselves and experience truly healthy and delicious lives through the practice of self-love. Today's live, I wanted to go um, come on live and answer a question, actually a, a few questions that I've been receiving in quite a number of frequency over the last few weeks. Uh, and that's really around what I do as an intuitive healer, um, how intuitive healing actually can help you and what an actual session really looks like with me. I've been getting uh, several questions from um, people who have followed me both on Facebook and Instagram around this. So I want to actually take some time and answer these live and give you all a chance if you have any other questions around this topic uh, while you're on live to ask those questions. So um, I'm going to give you just a little bit second for more people to tune in. Um, I see a lot of you all coming in now, but just a, a second or two for more of you all to tune in. I know I started a little later than what I had initially promoted and advertised. I said I was going to start uh, right at 12 p.m. Eastern time, um, but my technology wasn't working correctly. <laughs> so we're a little bit late. We're about five minutes late. Uh, so I just want to give you a little bit more of you all uh, some time to tune in before I start in. Uh, but again, I'm going to be answering the question around what I do as an intuitive healer, uh, what a session with me actually looks like, which, and what, what kind of benefits you can expect from that session, um, and how my... Actually, another question I got was how my work is different from coaching. So I'll be answering that as well in this live. Um, and so let's get started. So, the, so when, we're, when we're really talking about... Because there's enough of you all in here now. So when we're really um, looking at the question about um, what I do as an intuitive healer, the first thing to really understand is what healing is and why it actually took me a while to really um, own the title of healer. So I want to give you a little, little background around that for a second. Um, for many years, when, ever since I was around... Um, mm, like late teenage, almost 20, so about 19, um, I used to get readings from psychics. And almost every reading that I got um, said in the reading that I was here, one of the purposes that my soul came for this lifetime to do was to be a healer. I was going to be a big healer on the planet. That's almost every reading. And I have most of my readings, as a matter of fact, because um, either they were audibly recorded or they were written down. And so... Almost every reading I've ever gotten uh, uh, since I was about 19 till now um, has mentioned that, that I was a healer and I was here to be a healer. But when I first heard that, I resisted that um, because one, at that time, I thought <laughs> I wanted to be a big famous singer uh, and I wanted to be, you know, winning Grammys and all that. And that's what I thought that I really wanted at that time. So, you know, being a healer was not interesting to me. Um, and another thing was... Um, when I started my, my own healing journey, um, one of the things that I used to resist around being a healer was I really wanted people, the thing I was most interested in was is helping people feel empowered and helping people understand that they have the power to create what they, whatever they wanted in their lives, that there was nothing off limits, that whatever they truly wanted and authentically wanted, they could have. They have the power to manifest that in their lives. And what I saw when I was working with, I, you know, I myself have worked with healers, I've worked with energy healers, I've worked with all types of healers, I've worked with shamans, I've worked with, you know, Yoruba priests, I've worked with many people over my journey. And what I, and I first started, as a matter of fact, as an energy healer. That was how I first started my work. And what I discovered in that journey was a lot of times we give our power, when we go to healers, we give our power away to healers. We think they're the ones that are healing us. We think they have the healing power and we don't, and, and we are not the ones that are actually healing ourselves. And I didn't want that kind of dynamic with people. I didn't want people to give their power to me. I didn't want people to believe that I was doing something that special that they couldn't do. Um, and for themselves and I, and as I wanted them to understand who they were as souls, that we are literally manifestations of God energy, which is love energy. We are literally physical manifestations of that with all the powers of creation and manifestation as the whole of God. And so 
what I saw a lot with people who came to healers and people who, when they think about healers in the, in, in the collective consciousness, when we think about healers, we think about somebody doing something to us that we can't do for ourselves. And that wasn't what I wanted. I didn't want that dynamic. I wanted people to understand that they had the power of God within them just to create whatever God can create for themselves. And so I rejected the, the idea of being a healer because I didn't want to have um, a title that made people think that I was something special. I was on a platform and that they, that they were giving their power away. And this is the same thing that used to happen when I used to do psychic readings. Uh, when I used to do readings for people, they would come and, and um, although I would, you know, try in part that, that they were the creator, right, that they are the creative force in their lives. A lot of people, again, would give their power away and they would think that, you know, um, whatever was showing up for them, um, what they didn't have the power to change. Uh, and again, this is this happens a lot in the spiritual field, and I have to do a whole nother video around how we give our power away in the spirituality realm. Um, but I don't want to spend as much time on that. But I just wanted to say I used to reject the term healer because a lot of times when we we use it almost the same way we we think about doctors, in the same way we think about um, authority figures when we tend to give authority figures our power. And we tend to, to, to make them an expert and we tend to make them um, in our minds that they, they have more power and they know more and all of that than we do. And I didn't want that dynamic in my work. I was very clear that I wanted to do um, something that helps people feel empowered. And so I'm sorry, you guys, I'm trying to look here. My comment section has disappeared. Oh, somebody's saying there's no sound. Can you all still hear me? Type in here if you can um, if you can hear me. I just opened my comment section and somebody says there's no sound. So if you can hear me while I'm talking and you're live now, please um, type in the comment section here so that I can <laughs> continue because I don't want to dive into this and you all can't hear me. Um, so please type into this if you can hear me. I'm going to wait for a second for you all to comment. If I don't see any comments, I'm just going to... See, think that you all cannot hear me and I'm going to start this video over. Okay, so I hear somebody saying that somebody that you can't hear me. One more person, if anybody else, um, please type in the comment section and let me know if you all can hear me. Okay, great. So, um, so continuing with that, the, um, the thing that was happening was I was, um, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do work where people felt where I was, I was putting myself on a pedestal and people were feeling disempowered and they were giving me their, not that they were feeling disempowered, but they were giving me my power and that they weren't leaving feeling more empowered. And so I resisted the term of healer until I began, until my healing journey began to really, my own healing and transformation journey began to, um, began to go deeper and I began to understand what healing actually is and what it actually really is about. And when I began to understand what healing really is and what it really is about, and this really happened for me, this awareness really came for me in really the last two years. Um, I began to really own the fact that this is what I'm doing, that this is what my work is really about. Uh, and this is what I help people with. So I want to share with you what healing actually is. And so um, it's not and, and what we really have been taught to th about it in our cultures and our societies. We think healing is something like you eat, you eat food and that makes you and that heals you or you go to somebody else and they fix you or you fix something that's wrong with you or you fix something that's broken with you. And that's what healing is. And that's not actually what healing is. That's not what the journey of healing is. That's not what the purpose of healing is. Uh, and that's not what we do at, as a healer. That's not what I help people do when I'm talking about helping them heal themselves. So I'm going to share with you first what healing is. And then that, that will help you understand a little bit about what I do as an intuitive healer. So what healing actually is, is this restoration. It is the process and the journey we take to restore ourselves to who we truly are and the frequency that we truly are 
and the lifestyle that nourishes and supports that frequency. Once again, healing is about restoring ourselves to who we truly are and the frequency that we truly are. So who we truly are and the frequency that we truly are is love energy, is God energy. That's literally who we are. We are God energy manifest in human form. And what God energy actually is, is this love energy. So what we are trying to do is, so what healing actually is, is the practice you take to restore yourself to love energy and the person that you were intended to be, which is love energy expressed. And a lifestyle that nourishes and supports the love energy that you are. That's what healing actually is. So what I do as an intuitive healer is my um, whole work is to use my intuitive abilities to help you restore yourself to who you really are, the frequency that you really are, which is love, and a lifestyle that nourishes and supports that frequency. And why I say that is because when we are when we are being the love energy that we are, all is well. All is well in your body. So your body works well. Your body works optimally. It is healthy when you are embodying the love energy that you are. And all is well in your life. Your relationships work well. They're fulfilling. They're loving. You have abundance and um and a feeling of security and a feeling of prosperity in your finances. You have a sense of inner peace and inner connection. You are doing work that fulfills you and that um, gives you a sense of purpose. And you are experiencing a lot of joy in your life. You are experiencing joy. You have a sense of fulfillment. You have a lot of pleasure. That is, you have an overall well-being, Right. When you are loving yourself, I mean, when you are um, embodying the love energy that you are and not only that, but not only is all is well, but all good things start to come. So all the things that uh, all the inner dreams that you have, all the really your innermost desires, they start to manifest and they manifest with frequency. They manifest with ease and they manifest with all, all this struggle and this pushing and this stress um, and this um, and all this effort that we have when we are disconnected from ourselves. When we are disconnected from who we really are, we, we have to push and we have to try and force good to happen for us. When we are embodying who we really are, we don't have to force. Good just shows up. It shows up miraculously. It shows up um, frequently. It shows up effortlessly, right? That You don't need to do all these manifestation techniques when you are embodying and you are aligned with who you really are. You don't have to do that. Right. When you are holding the love energy that you are, you don't have to do that. And so that's what. But when you're disconnected from it, you have to. When you're disconnected from it, that's when dysfunctions arise in us. That's when suffering arises in us. That's where illness comes from. That's where all um, the, the challenges and the suffering that we experience, whether that challenges or suffering is happening in our body or whether it's happening in some space of our life, it is arising from the root cause of that is we are disconnected from who we really are and we've been disconnected for a long time. We've been pro, it's a prolonged disconnection. And so um, this is, and hey, all you all that are, I see all of you all that are commenting, Charles and Leslie and Arthur and uh, Oyasumi, I hope I said your name correctly. <laughs> Uh, I see all of you all. Uh, um, and if you have any questions around this while you're here, please comment and I'll try to answer those uh, during this video. So um, as a healer, what I'm trying as an intuitive healer, what I use is my intuitive abilities to help you restore yourself to the love energy that you are, to reconnect you to the energy of who you really are and a lifestyle that truly supports, nourishes and expresses that. And what I mean by use is my intuitive ability. So I have the, I am able to read people's energy. I am able to, um, and I also have the, the intuitive, intuitive abilities of mediumship and channeling. And so how I use that is um, I can speak to, I can read the energy of 
um, your soul and your body and see one, how, um, how connected you are to your soul's energy, how embodied you are and, and, and where you're disconnected, right? And where that disconnection, how that disconnection is creating any dysfunctions or challenges or illnesses or suffering in your life. I can see that when I read your energy. The other thing that I can do as well is um, as a medium, I can speak to your soul directly and I can speak to your spirit team. So what I mean by spirit team is if you have guides, if you have loved ones on the other side who have any wisdom to offer you for your healing or for the manifestation of what you want, I can speak to them and see what you need, what, what you need to do to best reconnect yourself uh, and, and restore yourself to your soul's energy uh, and for the, so that you can heal what you need to heal in your body or your life or manifest what it is you're wanting to manifest. So um, uh, Laura's saying, what's an example of a client case? I'm going to get to that in just a second. I mean, I'm literally going to tell you what, what you can look, what a session with me actually looks like. So um, <clears throat> that's what I do as a healer. One, I, I, as an intuitive healer, I connect in with your energy to see where you're not, where, what, where you're not uh, really fully embodying the love energy that you are, where you may be disconnected from it, where that disconnection is causing um, any type of suffering or challenges you're having, and what you need to do to reconnect, right, so that you can heal. Um, and I use my intuitive abilities uh, of mediumship and channeling and reading energy to garnish, again, the information that will best help you do that. So um, the other thing, the question that I, I had is like, what happens in a client session? <laughs> so uh, and I see some of you all that are asking that uh, here. So uh, just to reiterate before I get into that question. Um, what I do as an intuitive healer is help you restore yourself to your to the love energy that you are so that you can finally experience the healthy and happy life um, that you came here to experience. Because when you restore yourself to the love energy that you are, you will heal whatever is happening in your body and you will heal whatever is happening in your life. Uh, any dysfunction, any challenges, any... Um, suffering that you're experiencing, the only reason that it is happening is that you are not fully embodied of the love energy that you are. That is all that's, that's the only reason. That is the only reason that it is happening. And however that is, right? So you may not be embodying the love energy that you are because you may have some beliefs that are disconnecting, disconnecting you. So you may have some beliefs um, that you're not worthy, you're not enough, that there's something wrong with you. That disconnects you from the love energy that you are because the love energy that you are knows that you are enough. It knows that you are worthy. It is the, it is the consciousness and the feeling of worthiness itself. So when you feel that you're not enough some type of way, you're going to disconnect yourself from who you really are. If you feel, if you hold any beliefs of fear, right, and feeling not enough and feeling shame is a, is a form of fear, but but if you have any type of worry, if you have any type of anxiety, that also is disconnecting you from the energy that you are, because love energy is the is the feeling of ease and safety, right? And if you've watched any of my other videos, you heard me talk a lot about love energy as a multi vibrational energy, that is mostly it kind of it's kind of uh, meaning it has many different vibrations that make it up that make up the the energy of it, so it doesn't just feel like one thing. And we're taught a lot that love feels like one thing. We're taught that it feels like affection. And love, that's one aspect of love. It's not the entirety of love. And so that's why we, we have so much confusion around what love is, and especially a lot of confusion around how to truly love ourselves. Because what we've been taught is love is affection. And love is also ease. It's also the feeling of safety. It is the feeling of worthiness. It is the feeling of freedom. And it is also the feeling of joy. These are all the different vibrations that make up the love energy, right? And so when people ask me what the soul feels like, when I tune into the soul and what the energy of the soul feels like, again, what the energy of love energy feels like, it feels like all of those things. But if I could translate it into one phrase, it feels like all is well and all is welcomed. All is well 
and all is welcome. That's usually the feeling that that most people feel when they have a near death experience, by the way, when they cross over to the other side uh, and they are in the realm of oneness and in the realm of love. What they say is it's it's an experience or feeling way beyond anything we've ever known, way beyond anything we talk about. And what they say a lot of times, if you've ever read books from people who've had near-death experiences or watched the YouTube videos from people who've had near-death experiences, what they say is that feeling feels, uh, it, it's, it's this, this um, immense, infinite feeling of all being well and all being welcomed of you, that there's nothing about you, there's nothing about life that is rejected that is um, pushed away, that is not valued. All is valued, all is welcomed, all is well, right? And so that, so when we understand that aspect of love energy, then we have to understand that that's what you're trying to restore yourself to. This feeling of worthiness, this feeling of ease and safety, this feeling of freedom, this feeling of joy, right? This is what you're trying to really trying to embody. You're trying because that's what you are. You are that all those feelings put together embodied in physical form. And so we get disconnected from that, right? Our cultures disconnect that from us. If we've experienced any trauma, we get disconnected from that. Our social conditioning disconnects us from that. And so as an intuitive healer, I need to take a look and see. I, I help you see where you've been disconnected from that. Somehow, whether that was through your social conditioning, whether that was through the environment you grew up or the family you grew up in, you know, you were you you were um, that made you have beliefs and that made you have behaviors that didn't make you feel safe, that didn't make you feel worthy or enough, that don't make you feel don't make you feel trust in life, that don't make you feel uh, liberated or free, you know, that don't make you feel some type of ease, and that's how you get disconnected. Or there was some traumatic experience that you had, right? There's some trauma that you hold that made you disconnected. Or whatever the case is, we need to look at, you know, what that is and how do you how do you reconnect yourself? And the only way to reconnect yourself, by the way, and this is what I'm going to get to talk about here in the next question. The only way to reconnect yourself is to love yourself. Loving yourself is literally the practice of getting in tune with the love energy that you are. And living a lifestyle that nourishes that love energy and that expresses that love energy in your life, right? So it's, it's loving ourselves is literally the practice of getting in tune with the love energy that we are and expressing and nourishing that love energy in our lives. It is the only practice that does that. It is the only practice that restores you to the soul energy that you are. It is the only one that does that. And so... This is a perfect segue into the next question, which is, what does a client session look like with me, right? And so a client session with me is, there's really kind of three things that happen in a client session. And so the first thing that happens in a session with me, if you, it took, if you come to me and you're like, I want to work with you, I have something in my life that I like to heal, or I have something in my life that I like to transform, or I have something in my life that I like to manifest. First of all, there's no topic that's off limits. You can talk about, you know, the health of your body. We can talk about something going on with the relationships or in your marriage. We can talk about something that's going on in your mental state. We can talk about something. You can talk about sex. We can talk about sexuality. We can talk about, you know, trauma. We can talk about, uh, we can work on things around your finances or your business. There's, there's absolutely no topic that's off limits in a session with me. If you have something that you want to heal or something that you want to transform or something that you want to manifest, no matter what area of life it's in, you can work with that in a session with me. You can do like in, if you if you have issues around, you know, your intuitive abilities, right? There's something um, you, there's, you know, people come to me sometimes to help strengthen their intuitive abilities or their intuitive abilities have opened and they don't know what to do with that. They're they're seeing people that have transitioned and they don't know, you know, how to work with that. Or they're hearing, you know, they're hearing people who hearing people's loved ones on the other side or they're starting to open up to channel and they don't know. A lot of people have come to me with that. So there's a lot of different topics that you can come to me in a session. And there's three things that usually happen in a session. So the first thing that happens is I tune into your energy. 
So I do, I usually do a meditation in a session at the beginning of a session so that, and that meditation is for me to be able to um, quiet my consciousness enough so that I can tune into the energy of your soul and the energy of your body and see if that energy, what that energy has, uh, what information that energy has to relay about what you need to do to heal yourself or to transform what you're wanting to transform or what you or to manifest what you want to manifest. I also use that time when I'm connecting in your energy to see where you're disconnected, to see where you're disconnected from the love energy that you are and why that disconnection has happened. So again, have you been traumatized some way? Was has this disconnection happened because you got some um, negative social conditioning, right? So maybe you got some from your family or maybe you got some from your schooling, or maybe you got some from um, the religion you grew up in or whatever, but whatever negative social conditioning that you have received that has caused the disconnection, I see that when I connect in with your energy. Um, and so I'm looking at first what the disconnection is and where it is and why it's happened. I'm also looking at what this disconnection has, has created in your life. So what what how this disconnection has contributed to whatever challenge you're experiencing if you come to me with an illness that you're wanting to heal how this disconnection has created has contributed to the manifestation of this illness um, whatever dysfunction you're experiencing or whatever it is whatever level of suffering it is how this disconnection has contributed to that and then the last thing i'm seeing when i con connect in and i read your energy is I, I get, I ask your soul and your spirit team what you need to do to reconnect yourself. And again, because I know that loving yourself is the only, only thing that actually takes, that actually causes the reconnection, what I'm looking at and asking your soul and looking in your energy and asking your spirit team about is what path of self-love you need to take. Right. Do you need to work on your worthiness? Do you need to work on your liberation? Do you need to work on your ease? Do you need to work on your joy? Do you need to work on your, your feeling of safety? Um, whatever that is, what level of self-love do you need to work? What aspect of self-love do you need to work on to reconnect yourself to who you really are? And I get all of this information in that meditation. And then when I come out of that meditation, the second part is you and I, the, my client and I have a conversation about what I saw in the energy, what it told me, and I relay that information so that they, they can begin to piece together these pieces of, oh, okay, I see why this challenge is happening because this is how this belief in not being worthy created this, or this is why um, this stress I've been having has created this illness, or this is why um, this anger or this fear I've been having has stopped me from manifesting what I wanted. So we have this conversation in a session about to help you one, understand exactly why your challenge or your illness or your dysfunction or your suffering, why it has shown up, why it's happening in your life and why the disconnection has contributed to it. And then we have a conversation about this is where you need to love yourself, right? This is, this is where you need to love yourself and this is how. And then the third thing we do is we work on a specific strategy specific to that soul that's working with me, right? Specific to that person. Here's the strategy and the plan you're going to take to love yourself right into the healing that you, that you want and, or, or the transformation that you want or the manifestation that you want. So you leave me in a session. When you have a session with me, you leave with three things. You leave with an understanding of exactly why the challenge has arisen in your life and where it's coming from and how you created it from your disconnection. You have a full understanding of that. The second thing is you understand, you have an understanding of how you need to love your, like how, what, what path of self-love you need to take to reconnect yourself to who you are, to heal and to um, create a more healthy and happy life experience for yourself in whatever area of life you're wanting that to happen for you. So you're understanding exactly how you need to love yourself. And then you have a plan. You have a sp specific strategy and you have a plan of, okay, this is what I need to do. And that plan may involve some energy work. It may involve some meditations and some visualizations. 
and it's going to involve some lifestyle changes and some and some belief stuff and some belief changes. You're going to leave with in a session. You're going to under, You're going to leave with probably all of that. You're going to get some energy work exercises. You're going to understand what lifestyle changes you need to make and how to start making those lifestyle changes. You're going to learn how to change your belief system so that your belief systems and your thoughts really begin to align with who you truly are so that you can manifest the healing and whatever outcome or desire you really want to you really want to have. You're going to have some meditations that are going to help you tune in more to your soul's energy and embody more of your soul's energy. And you're going to have some visualization work um, and some visualization exercises that help you, you know, tune into your soul's energy to heal what you need to heal or manifest what you want to manifest or transform what you want to transform. So all of that happens in a client session with me. And again, it's in those three areas. First, we tune into the energy. Then we have a conversation about what the energy has revealed, um, you know, where, where the disconnection is, where the reconnection needs to happen. And then we have a plan of what, how to reconnect ourselves through the, through the practice of self-love and then all the different elements that are going to help you do that. So that's kind of what happens in a client session. Again, if you have any questions around that, please, um, please put those in the comments. I see some of you all have um, just commented and said hello and that you're listening and all of that. Um, but if you have any questions about anything that I'm sharing on this live, please, please put that in uh, the comment section here and I'll respond to those. So um, the, the last question that I, that I get around this that I wanted to answer is how my work is different from coaching. So how an intu intuitive healing session is different from a coaching session. And the main thing around this is the main difference is I am not just offering you my own personal wisdom. Now, I do offer my own wisdom because I had my own healing journey and I learned a lot about what healing actually is, what it's not, <laughs> what it actually takes, what it doesn't take. Um, and you really, how to, how to restore ourselves to our soul's energy. I learned a lot of that through my own healing journey. So I will offer some of my own personal wisdom. Um, and I'm not just offering some of the things that I learned, you know, in my, my psychology training, I am offering that in sessions as well. Um, in my, with my degree in psychology and my work in counseling that I did before, th before that, um, but I'm also, the difference is not just that you're going to get that, but you're also going to get the wisdom that's coming directly from your soul and from your spirit team. So I am tuning in, not just to, um, not, I'm not just working with you and talking with you and offering you, um, you know, exercises and um, strategies and lifestyle shifts and changes from my own wisdom, but I'm also tuning in directly to see what your higher self, what your soul has to say is the best direction to take. And also I'm tuning in to see what your loved ones who are on the other side, who are, who get to see. And why this is beneficial is your soul has, I only have um, a human perspective, right? So I can only see, I'm only going to offer what has happened in my life and what I have been able to see in linear time. Right. So I'm offering the wisdom from my past and whatever I'm garnishing from my present. But when you tune in to your higher self and when you tune into your spirit team and your spirit team is usually composed of like loved ones on the other side, your loved ones who have who you, who you've known in this lifetime, who's transitioned to the other side and they're, they've died. And then the, now they're in the realm of of oneness or in love um, or in God, however you want to term that. Some people call it heaven. Um, and also your spirit guides, they may be angels, they may be, um, they may be, they may be just guides who are assigned to help you through your, help you, um, through the growth of your life experience in this lifetime. The reason why you want to, to really tune into their wisdom and ask them for assistance is because they don't just see linearly. They see the entirety of the picture. They see the future. They see what's going to work best because they can see what, you know, what's happening in the future. They see the past. They see the entirety of your life. They see the entirety of your soul. And so when they give, when they give advice and they give guidance is coming from that perspective. 
And so why my work is different from coaching is I'm not just speaking from my human perspective. I'm also tuning in to the guidance from your soul and from your spirit team. And I'm offering that perspective as well. And a lot of times in my sessions, um, people who love ones from the other side will come through and they'll have something that they'll offer during a session. Their um, guides may come through and offer. I'm also a channel. So I work with my guys. You've heard me and I've shared this on my page. I've done blogs about this. I've also done a lot of events with my guides, live events with my guys. I, and you've heard me speak about the beloveds. The beloveds are my spirit guides. They are, I sometimes will channel them in sessions. I sometimes have done channeled, um, I've done channeled writings on my page from them. Um, I've given a lot of guidance from them. And I've done a lot of videos talking about who they are and how I connected with them and all of that. So uh, very similar to kind of Abraham Hicks and Bashar and S and um, Seth and some of the other uh, channel works. That's just kind of how I work with my guys and the wisdom that they bring through. So my my work is a little different than coaching because I'm not just offering my human perspective. I'm also tuning in to higher spiritual perspectives. One, I'm tuning into the perspective of your soul or your higher self. I'm tuning into the perspectives of and guidance of your spirit team, which is your loved ones on the other side and your guides. I'm also use I'm also tuning in with my guides, um, and I'm also getting that. So in the session, you're getting all this wisdom. And all these different, all these perspectives, as well as my own, my own, what I've learned about healing and how to heal ourselves and how to create what, a, a truly healthy and happy life. I'm using all of that in a session. And so an intuitive healing session is very different from just coaching because we're not just talking um, about lifestyle and um, belief system changes from this perspective. We're talking about it from that perspective. And we're also talking about energy. We're talking about consciousness. We're talking about vibration. And we're doing all of that. And there's a lot of energy work in this as well. Um, there's a lot of energy healing around this as well. So you're getting all of that in a session. Um, so here's a comment coming in. Reading your post and watching your videos has changed my life immensely. Oh, thank you, PJ. I look forward to having a one-on-one -on -one session with you because I know it'll take my healing journey to the next level. Whenever you're ready, um, yes. And and here's the thing about healing. A lot of times we think when we try to do healing alone, I'm a big, big proponent for getting help, um, getting um, outside help as well as inside help on your healing journey because, um, and not just because of this, whether you work with me or whether you work with another, whether you work with a shaman, whether you work with another energy healer, whether you work with another intuitive healer, Whatever. It doesn't have to be me, but I'm a big proponent on getting outside help because a lot of times what we bring into our own healing journey is we're operating out of our own consciousness and what we believe is possible. Because one of the things in, in my in my sessions is, you know, I, I take a no bullshit approach. I'm, I'm looking at what the highest possibility is for you in a session. So when I tune in, your soul wants the highest possibility. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for what you believe is possible for you. I'm not, I'm not trying to work with that. I'm not trying to look at what somebody else told you is possible for you. I'm not even looking at what you're, if you come to me and you have an illness, we're not even looking at what the prognosis that the doctors gave you is. I'm, I'm tuning into what the highest possibility is for the outcome of what your desire is. And I'm looking at, you know, I'm not looking at, I'm not trying, we cut through all of your, your perceived limitations. We cut through all of your, um, all of your bullshit beliefs and we get to the core of who you truly are. We're trying to get to the soul truth of you and the soul vibration of you and the possibility that is capable from that aspect. That's what I'm looking at in a healing, in, in a healing session. We're not looking at anything else. <laughs> We're looking at infinite possibility and the highest and for your highest good. And so I went and so that's why it's really beneficial to work with somebody because we when we're working with ourselves, a lot of times we have we have we bring our own fears into the into this into the healing process. We bring our own shames in. We bring our own limitations in. And so and, and we bring our own bullshit in. 
And so this can get in the way a lot of times when we're trying to do it on our own. But when you work with somebody else, especially somebody else who knows what it's like, this is another thing about me. I know what it's like to heal myself because I had to do it. I had to, I had to heal myself from terminal disease. I had to not just, not just healing my body. I had to heal my life. I had a lot of shame. I had a lot of fear. I used to, used to really um, suppress and hide myself. I didn't trust life. I didn't fully trust in my intuition. I didn't, um, I, I know what it's like to be dead broke. I know what it's like to um, not really feel good about yourself. I know what it's like to have shitty relationships. And my life is completely different now. I now know what it's like to have a delicious life experience that is fully expressed of who you are as a soul and truly honors that and is filled with abundance, is filled with love, is filled with joy and pleasure, is filled with, you know, a feeling of security. I trust life now. I trust my intuition above all else. I fully feel good about myself. I know who I am. I know how this world works. And I can manifest what I want to manifest. Like, this is, this is what I'm talking about. When you work with somebody, you, th- there's another perspective. They pull you out of your bullshit and they pull you into p- the possibility of your soul. Right? No matter how much work you've done on yourself already, no matter how many books you've read, how many workshops you've gone to, how many retreats you've done, how long you've been meditating, working with somebody can help you pull you to another level of that. And so this is why I'm very, uh, I'm very a, a big proponent on, on your healing journey, whatever you're healing from, whatever you're healing from something in your relationships, you're healing from something in your body, you're healing from something in your finances, you're healing from something in your business, you're healing from something in your mind, you're healing from something, you know, in your, in your life in your environment, whatever it is, working with somebody can help you. It can one collapse the, the amount of time it takes for you to, to for you to shift your consciousness and your energy so that you shift into new possibilities that working with somebody can collapse the time it takes for that. And also it can introduce new ways of thinking and, and help you see higher levels of possibility for you. And so that's why you really want to work with somebody in your healing journey. I didn't, you know, and I'm speaking from personal experience because, um, there were a lot of people I worked with in my healing journey, but a lot of times I had to do it on my own. And this is why it took me so long, why it took me a long time, because I, my healing journey started before, you know, social media got going. So you really only worked with people who were around you and you only knew, you know, you only knew of people who knew you or, or word of mouth. You know, if somebody, if a friend of you, a friend told you about someone and in my circle, there wasn't anyone like that. Right. So in the beginning, I had to really tune in. I had to learn to tune into my own soul's guidance um, because I, I didn't have that. And I didn't have that till the later stages of my healing journey. Um, so I know what it, how long it takes when you try to do things on your own and all the challenges you have when you try to do things on your own. And again, we're not here to do things on our own. That's kind of something that our culture has put in to us, this, this kind of cultural um, paradigm of independence. And that's kind of, we're here to really, we're one, we're one thing having the illusion of being separate, but we're literally one thing. We're all connected. We're this one thing. And so getting help is part of one of, of you. One, it's part of loving yourself, knowing that you don't have to do everything on your own and stress yourself out. And then it's also an experience of oneness. When you get help, you are allowing another aspect of you to serve you. Because who that other person is, is not a separate person. It's another aspect of you. And so when you get help, what you're allowing, what you're actually doing is allowing another aspect of you to serve you. It's really another aspect. It's really another version of you're actually loving yourself when you get help. Because you are literally allowing another part of yourself to serve yourself. That's literally what's happening. So... That's why I'm a big proponent of getting help, you know, having help. Now, the, the, the big transformation and the big healing is what you're going to do internally. You can only do that really yourself, but you don't have to do it alone. Healing happens by yourself. 
right? You are doing the healing, but you don't do the healing alone. And there's a difference. So, um, um, oh, yes, PJ says she's ready. She's scheduling when she finishes the live. I look forward to it, PJ. I would love, 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 love to work with you. Again, my, my sessions are a very loving space. They're a safe space, but they are a space where we do the real work and we do the real healing and we go deep. And so if you're ready to do the real work and you're ready for the real healing, please do so. I am more, more than excited to work with you and more than ready. Um, and I, if I don't see any more questions in the next kind of 15 seconds, I'm going to end the live. I hope I answer these questions about what I am as an intuitive healer, what you can expect with a session with me, what healing actually is, um, and how my work is different, a bit different than coaching, even though it involves some coaching, because I am going to be offering my own personal, um, what I've learned, my own personal w wisdom from my own healing journey, what I've learned, some techniques that I've learned, some um, exercises that I've learned, some strategies that I've learned, some energy healing um, and energy work, things that I've learned, but um, and some lifestyle changes and shifts and some consciousness shifts and how to change beliefs and exercises, all that I offer in my sessions. But I'm also tuning in to the higher wisdom of your soul and your spirit team and what they have to say um, so that you can really return to who you really are and begin to use that energy and use that expression to create and manifest a healthy and deliciously happy life because that's what creates it. So until next time, you guys, I love you. Thank you for being here. There's so much more coming. Uh, and until next time, go love yourself. Bye.